Hey guys, Professor Bill of Comic Book University and Bonehead issue number four. Okay, so this is um, this was a pretty interesting comic book. It was good, and I'm going to tell you something that was kind of bad. But we're going to get to that in a moment. I'm going to first talk about who actually made this book. Okay, so Bonehead issue number four. Apparently this is going to be the final issue for now. That's a direct quote. So created by Machine 56. I always love that stupid line. Writer Brian Edward Hill. Artist and cover artist Roald Marcia Marcellus. Uh, Sakti Yuano is the colorist and the letterer Jaka 80. Graphics Komolo. I don't I don't know what the graphics mean. Anyhow, so there's a whole bunch of like you know barcodes and all that stuff. I love this stuff. So Image Comics, Top Cow Productions, all that good stuff. So. We're going to see 56 uh, in a little bit, but first Rex has to deal with uh, the orange guy with the big fit, like Fistor from He-Man. Remember He-Man? There's a big dude named Fistor, and some knucklehead actually thought Fistor was a really good idea for a name. Well, anyway, at least this guy's name isn't Fistor. I don't remember what his name is, but I would have definitely remembered if it was Fistor. Um, I'm going to get into everything, why I'm having problems remembering everybody's name. Anyway, we see these guys fighting, but um, Rex is like, eh, I got better things to do. So he's going to boogie, and he jets out of there really quick, but he gets surrounded because not Fistor. <laughs> so he's like, oh, no, I got you. I got my peeps here. And so there's a big gang war because the kings show up, and 56 is with them, and Pumpkinhead Juice, or whatever his name is, is there. And um, then... Uh, the the main dude, I think his name is Tyrant from the from the Kings or the main Fistor guy is Tyrant. One of these guys is Tyrant, and then there's the other guy, and then Rex. These three decide to stay and fight each other while the uh, Kings, the rest of the Kings, N56 have to go after the Paradactosaurus guy. I don't know where the hell any of this stuff is coming from, dude. There were way too many people with masks. Remember when there was just one guy with a mask in the first issue? We're on issue four, and nobody's got a face. Everybody's just got a mask. How the hell did that happen? Going to get into that in a minute. <laughs> so, um, anyway, they, they all get into a big fight, and somehow everything's resolved. Now, it's resolved in a way where it's clear that we're going to have more players on the street, which, um, yeah, that's kind of a good thing. But more than that, the story is clearly not done yet either. We're going to go from one stage to another. This was very street level. Now, everything I would imagine would have to in some way, shape, or form be street level. But we're slowly getting to the concept that there's going to be um, high espionage and corporate uh, level um, crime going on. Uh, and good. Good. Listen, the whole reason for doing a story in the future is that you want to talk about a problem in the present, but, you know, you, you, you can't because you know that people aren't going to accept it. The only other way to talk about a problem in the present without actually talking about the problem in the present directly is to make everybody animals, but that's Aesop's fables. So in this particular regard, we're going to be talking about science fiction. So Brian Edward Hill, and mind you, it's been a while since this comic book was out. And that's the big thing I want to talk about. The big problem that I have with this comic book is the delay. Um, I, with the last time that I uh, read this comic book, issue uh, three specifically, I wasn't actually even telling you guys the names of the people who were involved in this comic book. I, I just, I, I changed up my style a little bit and I decided to actually give credit where credit is due because what kind of a schmuck am I for not doing that? So anyway, now I'm doing it and I recognize Brian Edward Hill who just did that awesome Batman story not too long ago, Detective Comics, whatever. And um, yeah, man, <laughs> like I could see his work all over that now because I, I, I can make the correlation. So Maybe, just maybe, I'm getting to the point where I can actually recognize his writing when I see it, even if I don't uh, see the name immediately. In the meantime, uh, this, this, was, uh, this was heavily delayed, and I don't know why. I actually thought they just canceled the book, because I, I haven't seen it in such a long time. Now, the problem with the delay is evident. We've seen that in DC with several books, Dark Knight's Metal and uh, Doomsday Clock and several other books. So... At this particular junction, this book is now delayed. And I don't know if this was meant to be the final issue or not, but if it wasn't, well, then this story was kind of stretched out one through three. And issue number four just kind of put the, the kibosh on everything really quick, like just put a foot on everything. 
because this story just wrapped up really quickly. I felt that if you're going to end this in one issue, it should have been a double-sized issue. That's no exaggeration. There's a lot that was left unsaid, a lot that was left undone. All of a sudden, 56 is free to go out and do whatever he wants to do. Um, how exactly did that happen now? So this was a very curious book for me. I didn't dislike the story, but it was so rushed. And it felt another way, in uh, like several DC comic books, where the story is rushed. The, the characters, the story, the plot, nothing can actually, excuse me, can actually breathe. I like my stories to breathe. There's, of course, times where you're going to need to have some fast-paced, hard-hitting, nutshot action. But it should be amidst, or, or, or at the very least, it should be to speed up a story that is being allowed to breathe. It's like, okay, we got a breather. Let's put in the prerequisite action scene, you know. Uh, let's put in a quick little fight scene or whatever. But we, we've got to keep a story going. And I felt that the story was just clipped, you know, and just compressed. This, this is almost like the, the Bonehead Cliffs Notes edition, you know. And that's a shame because I've been talking up this comic book for all three prior issues. And this one, I can't do that. Yes, there's a story here, but I feel like I got whiplash trying to see it as it went flying by me so quickly. So, yeah, yeah, that's definitely problematic. But that being said, I don't know the reason behind that. So I'm sure there's a good reason. And, and of course, unless... Brian Edward Hill's going to say, hey, man, the reason why is because, uh, and it's like, oh, okay, cool, cool, okay, now at least I understand it. And then I can go and talk to somebody at Image and say, dude, what are you freaking doing here? All right, this was a good story. Y you rushed it? You rushed it? So I am hoping to see more of this. And this is creator-owned, and that's one of the reasons why I love Image. you got to love Image. And everybody deserves to have a character on Image or some other platform where they can keep their story, you know, where they can keep their characters. Uh, creator owned to me is extremely important. I've had this conversation with several comic book writers who have and have not created characters for the big two, like Marvel and DC. So I'm, I'm genuinely like my heart swells knowing that Brian Edward Hill was able to, and I, I guess also, uh, by default, I don't know the, the right situation, um, Roald Marcellius. But uh, I guess Machine 56 <laughs> keeps the creation rights to this. Um, he's he's self-aware, right? So anyway, he gains his... Machine 56 does gain his freedom in this one, but I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't understand any of it because, again, the story was rushed. And rushing a story after it was delayed also tells me there's some kind of a problem. There was some kind of a problem, and I don't know what. But is what it is. Anyway, um pretty good story. Very, very disappointed it had to end like this. If it comes out again, if there's a new season of it or whatever, yes, I will absolutely jump all over issue number one, but I will be ready to drop it after issue number one if they're just going to do something like this again, rush it or or keep it on the delay. Uh, this was, for, for a brand new character, that's a really bad thing to do. You really have to have a perfect launch and a perfect landing in order for someone to want to stick with an entirely new character in an entirely new world. I mean, we can't expect Spider-Man to swing by at some point or one of the Robins to show up and be like, hey, man, you know, why don't you swing by the Batcave? We'll talk about trying to recruit you in, man. No, you're never going to have something like that. So what you have instead is this character and all of these characters have to survive entirely on their own in a vacuum. Can't have any mistakes on the first one and two pretty big mistakes on this one, so I'm tentatively frightened about the future of Bonehead because I really want this to succeed. Anyway, guys, Professor Bell, Comic Book University, class dismissed.